This is a public hearing with hearing of visitors included on the agenda. And all are invited to attend in person or on Zoom. I am calling a roll call for quorum. Chair Tim Sullivan is here. Uh, Janet and I track uh, member. Here. Carol Roberts, our treasurer. Here. We do have a quorum. Some members are present and some are in person. Uh, some are in person and some are on Zoom. You are hereby given notice that members of the Brockton House of Authority are called to me in the special session on Tuesday, April 30th, 2024 at 2 p.m. in the Mayor Bill Carpenter Executive Boardroom, Manning Tower, 45 Garden Road, first floor, Brockton, Mass. I was going to give the COVID-19 memo from Governor Charlie Baker. So I'm going to say it was extended by Governor Healy to March 25th, uh, to March of 2025. This meeting slash hearing of the Brockton Housing Authority will be held in person at the location provided on this notice. Members of the public are welcome to attend this in-person meeting. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and our participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting slash hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda could make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The public is invited to view and or listen to the meeting via phone, computer, laptop, or tablet. To do so, download the Zoom Cloud meeting app in any app store or at www.zoom.us at 2 p.m. on April 30th, 2024. Click on and join meeting to enter meeting ID and enter meeting ID number 899-1909-3861, passcode 841783, or use the link http double dot double slash doom dot us slash i slash 899-1909-3861. You may also join by calling the conference line at 1-646-558. 8656 at 2 p.m. on April 30th, 2024. And enter the meeting ID 899-190-93861, passcode 841783, followed by the pound sign. The board chair will instruct participants on the appropriate time and manner for public comment during this meeting. If you could please rise and remove your hats if you can, silence your cell phones for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all right. Item one, roll call, Mr. Keeble. Commissioner Trask. Here. Commissioner Roberts. Here. And Mr. Chairman. Here. We have a form. Item two, approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of March 28, 2024. Item A in your packet. I have had the opportunity to review the minutes and found them to be in order. I recommend that they be approved as written. So move. Second. Motion has been made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner uh, Janet Trask. Motion is to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of March 28, 2024, as written. Any discussion or questions on item two? Hearing none, roll we'll call, Mr. Keeble. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion carried. Item three, hearing of visitors. Any member of the public is invited to speak before the board. Visitors wishing to be heard must sign in with their name, address, and contact number before the start of the meeting. Each visitor will be allowed three minutes to speak on each subject. The board will take any issues under advisement and respond at a later date. Total time for the hearing of visitors will be limited to 15 minutes, which will be strictly enforced. There will be no passing your three minutes to another. All visitors can be heard on agenda items only. 
any hearing of residents? There's nobody signed in, Mr. Chairman. I don't know if anybody coming in via Zoom would like to uh, speak. Please uh, unmute and announce yourself. Yes, yes, I don't know. <clears throat> Hearing none, we have no hearing no visitors. Item four, correspondence. Members of the board, you have three um, pieces of correspondence. One is a letter from the Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities awarding the Housing Authority with a $60,000 grant for the Resident Service Coordinator Program. Uh, this is a long time program the Housing Authority has had, and it's always been funded at 53700 since the mid 90s. Um, so it's gone down quite a bit in real value, but uh, this year it has been increased to $60,000. So I, I want you to know about that. And as you can see, it's to you, Mr. Chair. Um, the second piece of uh, correspondence is simply the agenda for the event <laughs> committee. I refer to it as the vibrancy committee in my report. But I want to let you know about the uh, wonderful things that are happening uh, because of the group of uh, uh, staff. And it's an eclectic group. They come from all different departments. Uh, they meet on a monthly basis. They put this agenda together. There was a great uh, resource fair at Crescent Court with uh, the Y there, HUD came. Uh, there was food, uh, music, photography. Uh, they did the same thing at uh, Arthur Pagan Way. The next day, there was a um, Earth Day event where Carmack showed up at Washburn Heights. Uh, and they cleaned up Washburn Heights, reinvigorated the playground. Um, they also gave us a $500 donation wow. uh, for the continued working on that. They're also, uh, that day, there's a, um, a woman who lives across the street on Clifford Ave who belongs to this cooperative, a farming cooperative. And she brought down the farm, uh, the person who owns the farm, uh, from just over the line in Cumberland, Rhode Island. And um, they have established a garden there. It's there. It's, uh, I went there yesterday. Uh, it's about a 30 by 30 garden. They laid down a bunch of um, compost, uh, we put some trails in between it. I think uh, I know some pictures of it were on Instagram today. There's a wonderful, wonderful program where the people, the residents are, are, are planting and they'll also get the benefits of the, the fresh um, vegetables. So it really is a nice, nice program. Um, and they're continuing, as you can see, they're looking to do some things at the end of the school year. Uh, they've gone right through to the holidays next December where they're contacting the fire department to see if the fire department will ride through with Santa Claus on um, and, you know, have some kind of event um, ending at um, Roosevelt Heights. So they, there's a lot of energy going in here and, it, 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 and it's not mine. It's uh, it's Dennis Sheedy. Oh, Dennis, you're first on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, Bruna, Don, uh, uh, Donna, Jacqueline, Jen, Lillian, Shauna, Tremita, Siamara, uh, and, and so it's really come together. It's a, it's a great group. Okay. So, this is very exciting. Wow. I mean, this is the biggest thing ever. <laughs> it, it is. It is wonderful. Yeah. It's nice for the families. And it, it's the, the, the when I, I call it vibrancy, the energy that's coming out um, from both the, uh, the the employees, but every time we touch the residents, there seems to be some resident feedback where not only is it very positive, but there's involvement. Um, Evelyn now up at Washburn Heights is, is uh, you know looking to be the tenant president up there. She involved, she's involved with the um, the uh, garden and she was involved. She was the uh, liaison for the playground. So we're seeing a lot of that stuff happening. And then finally. Um, is a letter from the city council signed by all 11 city councilors to Governor uh, Mara Healy regarding the Brockton Housing Authority's property at Camp Pelo High Rise. Um, I was very appreciative of Councilor Castro sponsoring this, allowing us to come in and speak in front of the council. Um, many of the councils that councilors that night spoke very strongly about the, pro, uh, the project and uh, supporting it. So it's just another step uh, that we, we're taking to make sure that the state understands how important the project they're here in Brockton is. Just one question, Tom. Have yeah. there been a service for Yes, yes. This one here? Yep. Any discussion or questions from the correspondence? 
and we will find another block. Like we do not. Item five approval to the special meeting of April 30th, 2024, exhibit B in the packets. Commissioner Lovett? Yes. Um, and we have gone over the bills and I have found everything in order. Had a few questions, but they all been resolved. So I make a motion to accept the the bills as they are. Second. Motion has been made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Carol Roberts. Motion is to approve the bill for the special meeting of April 30, 2024, as presented. Any questions or discussion on the motion? <clears throat> Hearing none, roll call, Mr. Keeper. Commissioner Trask? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. Chairman, if I could ask Commissioner Trask, can you see us? Yes. You can. Okay. Can't, you can't see me? I'm seeing a picture of my face. We can see you fine. Oh. Uh, um, I don't know why, but you can see us fine sitting in the room. Okay. He's just smiling up there. I know. Uh, <laughs> just what I want. Nothing, nothing like having your face looking right back like that. <laughs> <laughs> Item six. Approval of management agreement between the Brockton Housing Authority and the Abington Housing Authority. Yes. Exhibit C in the So this is every three years we have to renew this agreement. Uh, there is a slight change this year. Um, the accounts payable process that we were using was quite cumbersome with uh, paperwork going back and forth between the Abington office and the Brockton office several times was causing us to take some bills late, um, causing some invoices to be submitted two and three times. Mm -hmm. So what we're moving the um, actually accounts payable um, function of actually writing the checks back to that office um, with Ms. Esposito, she, she will do that. It will still be overseen by uh, Mr. Patius and his his staff yeah. uh, before the checks can be written. They, they have to it's okay to, to send these so, out. Uh, so, uh, if we know it's a very fair agreement, um, and I would recommend that the, uh, the board approve it. So move. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Kenneth Kraft. Motion is to approve a three year management agreement between the Abington and Brockton Housing Authority beginning January 1, 2024. And then the December 31st, 2026. Any discussion or questions on the motion? Hearing none. Roll call, Mr. Keeper. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah. Motion carried. Item seven. Review of moving to work. MPW conference report, exhibit D in your paper. Uh, moving to work, MPW, I just want to make sure I say that over. Uh, we went, uh, Mr. Plouffe, uh, Mr. Patius, uh, Ms. Campbell and I went to uh, the conference in Washington. Uh, it was very worthwhile. Uh, and I'll, and if Ms. Uh, Campbell and Mr. Plouffe want to say anything, I'll allow them to. Um, I found it much more um, substantial than the first one because I had a better understanding of what the program is and what flexibility we have. Um, I wanted you to know the, the, the types of subjects that they're talking about there. That's why we, I gave you the agenda. Uh, Mr. Uh, Patius uh, is now part of a CFO um, uh, working group. Working group. Working group. Yeah. Um, so that's the, what's happened is um, we have financial flexibility and we can do different things with our money. HUD isn't exactly sure what that means. We're dealing with something with the capital fund right now. It's a very friendly conversation, but I, I, the gentleman who we deal with, Mr. Twergo, saying, I'm not sure. We're saying, hey, we think we, we can do this with the money and put it on this land. And he's saying, oh, I think you might be right, but I don't know if he can do it this year. So uh, Mr. Pace is working with this CFO uh, working group you know they're, they're communicating directly with hud saying okay let's get this down so everybody's on the same page without flexibilities um uh, 
uh, Ms. Campbell attended the sessions on the uh, landlord cohort, what we can do to make it easier for people to lease with it, and she'll talk about that in a little while. And then what can we do to make it more attractive for landlords to be part of the program? Because I, I know you've probably heard of landlords saying, I don't want to be in that program. I yeah. don't want to deal with the government. I don't want inspections happening. I don't want to do all your paperwork. Um, and we have a responsibility and a need to educate them to see, to show them that the program can be very good for them and the landlord uh, too. And we have many, many landlords. Um, the MTW concept of this flexibility has, ha has been very, very productive over the years, made a lot more affordable housing, but not all people at HUD are behind it. So we have to continue to advocate to, to move forward. So I, um, oh, and there's one other thing we learned there. That this is very troubling, very, very, very troubling. There are proposals right now that HUD is going to fund next year's budget like taking the reserves away from housing. Mm -hmm. Telling you, we're going to give you less money so you make it up with the money you have in the bank. What that is saying to you is if you save money and you intend to do things with it, we're going to take it. Mm -hmm. Tried to do it one other time. They were sued and lost seven years later. The case, the case was yeah. done. So it's just something to, to pay attention to. We'll keep you uh, up aware of it as they go through. Uh, it actually came out in President Biden's um, budget proposal. Uh, that's really the only thing that we've seen put forward. So, uh, but we are, the, the uh, entities that we work with, FADA, NARO, <coughs> CLAP, they were all acronyms, so uh, they, they're all working on our behalf to, to say how unfair that is uh, to penalize well-run organizations. Do have the funds on the in the savings? Yeah, that's what they want. They want our savings. But what, what it would be like, this, this, I'll give you an analogy. You have three kids. One kid spends every dime they, uh, you have two kids. One kid spends every single dime they have. The other one saves a lot of it. Something comes up, you say, you know what? I'm going to, I'll give you, you spent all your money. So here's a hundred bucks. You don't need anything because you saved all your money. In fact, I'm going to take it from you. Give it to. Um, so it just that's just one thing I think about the board would be aware. Of. Uh, there is the the vote on this is simply I'll answer any questions. If uh, Tom or Bruna has anything to say, they can uh, share that with you. Or Michael, I'm sorry, um, but it's just the vote to uh, accept and put on file. Anything to say, Tom, Michael? No, no it was great. Great. Learned a lot. Yeah. I mean, very, very bright people from all of those countries. Where was it from? It was in Washington, D.C. I uh, sat next to a woman at breakfast from Alaska. Mm -hmm. Alaska. Oh, it it was raining. It rained the whole time we were there. You know, it's one of those conferences where you go into the basement, you sit in a windowless room for three days. You know, that's, <laughs> but, that, but it's a lot of exciting yeah, stuff. <clears throat> We need a motion and a second item seven. Before we vote. So, Tom, the reason why you see your picture, your camera is off. See on the bottom video? But right. She can see us. Yeah, she can see us, but the camera can't see the room. Is is there a problem? No, not with you. Oh. See? Well, okay. Good night. I didn't do anything. We need a motion and a second, oh, item seven. So move. To put on file. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Daniel Trapp. <laughs> motion is to accept the moving to work conference report and put on file. Any questions or discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Roll call, Mr. Kibo. Commissioner Trapp. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. And Mr. Chairman. Yes. Item eight, review of 2023 performance management, management review results, exhibit E in your packet. So once uh, every two years, the um, Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities does a review from the Housing Authority. They do a desk audit, what they call, they look at some of the reports we've sent them. Uh, overall, the Housing Authority has done very well. Most important part, if you look at the uh, occupancy rate report, 
Um, it's 100% for the chapter 200, that's Washburn Heights. It's 99.9% uh, .9 for the elderly units. It's 99.8% for the uh, family units. And overall, we're at 99.9. So we keep our units filled. Um, we do have some rent problems, collecting rents. Uh, I've, I've shared that with you in the past. They're aware of that. Um, the board did very well. All five members uh, were certified as to keeping your training up to date. Um, the operating reserves, uh, the amount of money we have in the bank for the um, state program is lower than we would like it to be. The state is well aware of it and we are working with them. We are um, uh, hoping and, and, and pretty confident that we will have them restore some of our reserves. Uh, Mr. Uh, so Christopher will provide his data on how much it costs to turn units off uh, over, and they usually will fund that. Last time we did that, they gave us two hundred, a little over $200,000 for that. Um, but the bottom line is because our units are older, our average cost to prepare these units is extremely high. We're not cleaning them and painting them and turning the keys over. We're putting in new cabinets. We're, we're putting in new baths. We're putting in... Uh, uh, we're sometimes rebuilding electrical systems. I mean, it's just all sorts of problems in the in the in the uh, units because of their age and the fact that you know a lot of times you'd be doing major renovations as you go along, but in this we haven't been doing that on the state side because we don't have the money. Um, but that that's one of the uh, biggest things. Other than that, um, they came. They were very um, uh, um, happy with what we had been doing. Uh, Brockton has a very good um, reputation with the, with the state and what we do. We need a motion item eight and a second. So move. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Janice Kraft. Motion is to accept the 2023 performance management, management review results of the Brockton Housing Authority and put on file. Any questions or discussion on the motion? Hearing none, roll call. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion carried. Item nine. A water contract, flooring installation, repair, and hardwood flooring refinishing. Exhibit F in your packet. Mr. Keeble. If I could ask Mr. De Christopher to speak on this, please. If you want, you can take a seat here. Good afternoon, everyone. Good Thank afternoon. you. Uh, this contract is for a flooring installation repair in hardwood floor retention. On March 7th, 2024, Brockton Housing Authority advertised for two qualified flooring vendors for flooring installation repairs and hardwood floor retention on the BHA vacant units for work that cannot be performed by town staff. This work is to be awarded to two responsive and responsible bidders that meet the qualifications set in the bid packet. This is a three three year contract, not to exceed one hundred fifty thousand dollars for the duration of the contract. On April second, two thousand twenty four, the submission deadline, we received three bids as reflected in the bid tally sheet. The low and responsive bidders were eight from floors, two twenty five Prospect Street, Stoughton, Mass, and Capital Carpeting and Flooring of sixty four Industrial Way. Wilmington Mass. Bids were advertised in the Central Register, Farm Buys, the Enterprise, and the BHA website. Three companies received bid packets and three bids were submitted. They were Atram Flooring, Stoughton, Capital Topics of um, Wilmington, and Mass Floors of Braintree Mass. I recommend a motion to award the contract in the amount not to exceed $150,000 to Atram Floors of Stoughton and Capital Carpet of uh, Wilmington Mass. We need a motion and a second item now. Where were these floors going to be? In the vacant units. Okay. So moved. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Cal Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Dan Pratt. Motion is to award a three year contract. In the amount not to exceed one hundred fifty thousand dollars to Aislinn Floors of Stone Mass, the Capital Carpet and Flooring of Wilmington Mass for flooring insulation, repairs, and hardwood flooring replacement. 
Any questions or discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. And Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item 10, approval of 2024 HUD income limit exhibit G in your packet. If I could ask Mr. Pluff to speak on actually the next, I believe, three items. Yes. I'm uh, pinch hitting for Ms. Rose. She's on uh, vacation. Um, every year, HUD publishes uh, its income limits based upon uh, the data they reserve, uh, receive as part of uh, their ongoing census work. <clears throat> and they set the income limits, what's in each uh, area. And so they, they determine what's at 80% of the area, maybe an income 50%, 30%. And this determines who is eligible for our various programs. The next three votes, the first one has to do with our HUD programs, and then the next two have to do with two different state programs. These are uh, numbers given to us by HUD. There's not much we can do about it. We don't often, we don't always agree with their numbers. Um, we're sure they're usually behind what's going on, but these are the numbers that we've been provided. No, no, what's in uh, last year, do you have the numbers for last year? Did they go up or down? Um, the area median income went up. Yeah. Well, and I, I do want to uh, make sure that the board understands that we have very, very, very few people who are close to these uh, limits. Yeah. Most of our people are below $39,000. Uh, Actually, our average is somewhere around sixteen thousand uh, dollars. You know, there are there are exceptions, but um, so these don't uh, affect many of our residents at all. But a very very small uh, percentage. We need a motion and a second. Item so ten. Move. Second. 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 Motion is to approve the 2024 HUD income limits as public by HUD for the Brockton Metropolitan Statistical Area. Any questions or discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Roll call, Mr. Spiegel. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion carried. Item 11. Approval of 2024. AHBP income limits, exhibit eight in the packet. This is the uh, exact same. It, um, it's a state program, the alternative housing voucher program, which is for uh, single disabled individuals, but they use the HUD income limits. We need a motion and a second. Item 11. So move. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner General Kraft. Motion is to approve the 2024 AHBP income limits as presented. Any questions or discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Roll call, Mr. Peter. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion carried. Item 12. Approval of 2024 MRVP income limits, exhibit I in your packet. Um, and this is the same as the last two for the Massachusetts rental voucher program. It is the Massachusetts flavor of Section 8, and they use the same HUD income. We need a motion and a second. I don't know. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Janet Kraft. Motion is to approve the 2024 MRVP income limits as presented. Any questions on the motion? Roll call, Mr. People. Commissioner, Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. 
Motion carried. Item 13, approval of amendment to section eight administrative plan. Exhibit J in the back. Yes. Oh, yes. I'd like to ask Ms. Campbell to speak of this, please. Oh, is that what it's doing? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, turn the camera. Turn to the camera. Oh, don't worry. I, something's it's gone mute. I don't know what's wrong. What? Something's gone mute. Can you get it again? Can you check it? Um, yeah, I'm gonna get, they
Oh, here it is. Audio oh, on. there it is. Audio on. Start video. Okay, audio is on. Let's see. Here we go. All set, Janet. Yeah, I was just calling Tom. Did in, could in you hear me? Before? We get it. <laughs> so all set. Okay. Uh, did, so you can hear now. Was it at my end or your end? All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, good, good. <laughs> Glad it wasn't me. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, where were we? Oh, 19? No, 13. 13. 13. So we did approve the MIVP income limit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I don't know here. Yeah. I'll read it off again. Thank Approval you. of amendment to Section 8 Administrative Plan, Exhibit J in the back of Mr. Debo. Yes, I'd like to ask uh, Ms. Campbell to speak on this item, please. Um, so last month, we, I, um, we brought over the Section 8 Admin Plan that you guys have drafted and approved. Um, and this month, we are making an addendum to the Admin Plan. So we are actually adding our new MPW activity um, under the landlord incentive to be able to pay security deposit to our new voucher holders. Um, so all new participants that come on the program, uh, I'm not sure if you guys know, usually receiving um, a voucher takes up to 10 to 13 years. So it's kind of, it'll be rough for us to be able to approve a voucher, but then the security deposit part being an issue for our participants not to be able to get right now. So this is Kind of, yeah, to help our lease operate and also help our Good move. Mm -hmm. We need a motion and a second, item 13. So move. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Janice Craft. Motion is to adopt the Section 8 Administrative Plan, Chapter 9, mm -hmm. Box 1, Lease in Tennessee, agenda as of April 30, 2024. Any questions or discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Roll call, Mr. Keeble. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. I yeah. want you in. Item 14. Authorization for the executive director to execute documents with Eversource relative to easement and replacement of existing gas pipe. At Bellia Heights Project 24-2, Exhibit K from Bellia. If I could ask Mr. Cook to speak on this item, please. Thank you, Mr. Tebow. Members of the board, uh, previously you have um, approved uh, contracts between the uh, Housing Authority and Eversource. If you remember, we were contacted by the Department of Public Utilities that we were a master meter operator because when certain of our properties were built in the 50s, they put one meter on the street, probably to save money, and then ran all the piping to the building. So we had one meter. Um, because of that, the federal government said we were a master meter operator. And now we were responsible for all the piping after the meter. And we had to have a plan on how to uh, fix it, how to test it yearly, because this is uh, gas piping and it's very dangerous. So um, the board approved us signing a contract with <clears throat> Eversource that they would replace all the piping um, and put meters at each building, therefore relieving us from all that responsibility and liability. And remember that these pipes have all been there for 50 years. Uh, not too long ago with the Campello high rise, we had a leak at a, a four inch main um, that the gas company was there all night fixing. So all our pipes face that possibility. Um, so in order to work at Bel Air Heights, um, the gas company Eversource is requiring that we provide them with an easement and you know specific places where they're going to go from the street to the building. An easement so that they can lay their pipe there and always have the ability to go and repair that pipe. And that's what this document does. You're uh, authorizing the executive director to uh, sign that easement. 
Can I see $10? Is this? It might have been for a dollar. No, I think it actually said 10. What is it? 10, yeah. It's the ten dollar. You never saw the one dollar. We're never going to see the ten dollar these times. Just talk that that happened at my own house as well. That Mr. Gaffney did it themselves, and they had to come and move it. Right. They moved it outside. They moved it outside. Right. At no cost to me. Right. Yeah. There's stuff all there. Yeah. This is going to cost. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a it's fun. a very reasonable cost yes. uh, considering what we would have to do if we owned the heights. Yes. Sir. Yep. We need a motion and a second. Yep. Item 75, 14. So move. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Cal Roberts, seconded by Commissioner McKenna Kraft. Motion is to authorize the executive director to execute any and all documents, including but not limited to the attached easement for the purpose of replacing existing gas piping at Bellier Heights Project 24-2. Any discussion or questions on the motion? There is none. Roll call, Mr. Peebles. Commissioner Traff. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 15, a water contract. Review of Resident Services Coordinator Program, Exhibit L in your packet, Mr. Tebow. If I could ask Mr. Fluff to speak on this, please. Thank you, Mr. Tebow. Uh, members of the board, uh, we have had a Resident Service Coordinator Program for many, many years. And we've had the same structure for many, many years. And the question is, is that the best structure now? Uh, where has the industry gone? Where has um, so we said it's time to take a look at this. And we put on the street a request for proposals for a company to come in and evaluate our present uh, delivery of services by the resident service coordinators and what are the best practices in the industry and make recommendations to us to tell us how, how best to deliver these services. Um, so uh, we put a uh, advertisement in the Commonwealth uh, Goods and Services. We put it up on our website. We contacted different vendors who have done consulting for us in the past. And focus strategies came in with a proposal. We reviewed the proposal. We interviewed them by Zoom. Uh, then we opened up their uh, price proposal afterwards. Um, the woman who's going to be in charge uh, and the main person we're going to be dealing with came in and revamped the Newton Housing Authority's whole resident service coordinator program. They had a very weak program and now they have one of the best in the area. So we're hoping that uh, she can give us some recommendations on where where to go and what to do. I would like to just add to that. So we started out in uh, the mid 1990s with one person at the Bel Air High Rise. Then we added four more in, in the federal developments. Then we've added people from Old Colony Elderly Services through the Department of Elder Affairs. We have people through the Department of Public Health, the Department of Mental Health, um, Vitra. Um, uh, I can't think of Vitra's last name. So we have all these Old Colony Elderly Services. We have, we have all these services coming in and they're not coordinated. And the, the second part of that is the residents that we're assisting are much, much more frail than we have ever helped. They do not have family support. They need the service coordination to ensure they can live peacefully in their units uh, for as long as possible. So I think it is just the perfect time, or it's, it's, a, it's a necessary time to review how we do this and make sure that we're getting the best bang for our buck. Because there's, there's a lot of money going into this from all different Places and we want to make sure that it's uh, effective. It, this isn't to uh, replace anybody else, is it? It's not to replace anybody, but it might be to say, what, how do, how where does Fred sit in this organization, and how does how does he work with all these other entities? But no, it, there's nobody uh, to be replaced. So you're just trying to coordinate everything. Coordinate exactly. Mm -hmm. Think about all the, I just named, I think, five different organizations who have people coming in. 
And it's it's difficult. We work we're working with old colony elderly services. Sometimes right now we're trying to work on key issues, right? How do we get outside staff access to our uh, places 24 seven when that staff might not be the same person on any given day? Um, yeah. you know, so it, it's it, those type of things that, um, and we don't want the staff to be locked out if they're coming to see a sick person and that's why they might be coming. We need a motion and a second, item 15. So moved. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Janet Pratt. Motion is to authorize the executive director on behalf of the Boston Housing Authority to enter into a contract with focus strategies in accordance with the attached proposal with a maximum contract amount of $70,000 plus reimbursement costs. Any discussion or questions on the motion? So it's going to cost $69,983? Yes, and if you read their proposal, plus they were looking for um, reimbursement if they're going to have translators, um, you know, when it, when they have meetings, focus groups, and maybe even a stipend for those that participate in focus groups so they can get a good cross-section of our residents. So these all these people won't necessarily come to Brockton? I mean, there's a, there's a uh, they, bunch they of may, people. They may work on the um, uh, plan or document that is given to us. So somebody will be here and collect the data mm -hmm. and then they'll bring it back to the company and different people in the company will analyze it and, and look at it and see what the trends are and, and where we should go. But we won't have one person that kind of oversees us. Want, who we'll be face to face with. Rebecca, Rebecca Camacho. 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 Camacho is the person who will be the lead person here. Um, she lives in Newton. Oh, okay. There's so many people listed in here. Well, we asked for a company profile as part of uh -huh. it. You really, you want a company that can do the job. You don't want, you know, somebody who just opened up their office. It's like, right, when you go to the dentist, you want the best dentist you can get. Oh, amen. And where, which page is Rebecca on? I will find it. Go to the back, Thank you. Thank you. Thank She's on page seven as far as a brief description experience. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I see. She's our kind of go-to person. Yes, she will be our, our number one contact. She okay. will be to lead with us. And then on page 41 is her full resume. Okay. She uh, got her BA from Holy Cross and her master's of social work from Boston College. Wow. And she's from Newton, you said? Yes, she lives in Newton. And have you met her, Tom? Or either Tom? Through, through Zoom. Oh, okay. We, we did an interview and it was uh, Rebecca and uh, uh, her boss from California. Now, when they put all this together, I mean, because we'd like to see that um, with the coordinators said the work with um, the housing authority and the tenant organizations with people who need hospice care who don't know how to go about hospice care. You know, people, your family gets sick, what to do, um, even as far as funeral homes. You know, everybody's not ready, don't know about funeral homes, who to contact, you know, and let funeral homes know that these are the people you can work with and, um, and explain to them the procedures and things they need to go through. It's a lot of, we, we have a lot of sick people in my building. Now, and unfortunately, um, they're passing away and families are coming in going, oh my God, I didn't expect this and I don't know where to go and I don't know what to do. And it's just due to the lack that people don't plan 
ahead of time for crises. We and also, crises are going to happen. We also have a lot of long-term chronically sick people. Yes. They, they're not at the end of their life. No. They they're just, just been sick. They'll, they've been sick for 20 years, and they might be sick for another 20. You know, uh, serious diabetics. Yeah. Uh, they're disabled. That's yeah, why they're there. That's why they're there. Uh, and, and they need... Uh, they need care. They, and it's getting... Anybody call their insurance company try to figure out how to get your... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that, 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 that type of stuff. Yeah. If you're very sick and you're on medication and you're trying to, and people are done, there's all sorts of there's 8 million uh, things. How to get a life alert system now that you're, you're having oh, problems with balance. Oh, don't even go there. So that's Paperwork. what these people do. And there's many different ways to go about it. We just need to coordinate that to make sure that we present to our residents the best possible service package. Yeah, and when you lose your mouth, Mass health coverage for the least little thing trying to get back That's is 36 pages of paperwork that they already have, you know. So, it's, yeah. Susan, do I read the motion off again? And she's yeah. fluent in Spanish? Yeah. Mm -hmm. she, yes. Yes. She yes. Is. So will she occasionally come down and meet with our people? Absolutely. Have... Yes. Oh, yes. She'll be here on a regular basis. Okay. I mean, that's so their data gathering is to meet with staff, with residents, with the service providers, and find out what the lay of the land is before they put a, together a plan to say, geez, this might be optimal for you. Mm-hmm. But they have to find out what's going on first. See what we have for resources. Maybe we should meet with her too to, at some point. Absolutely. Uh, there will be a presentation in this room at the end uh, at which Rebecca will uh, attend to uh, give the final report. But prior to that, certainly can uh, sit down and talk to board members. Okay. I'm just going to read it off again. A motion was made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Janet Kraft. Motion is to authorize the executive director on behalf of the Boston Housing Authority to enter into a contract with focused strategy in accordance with the attached proposal with the maximum contract amount of $70,000 plus reimbursement costs. Roll call, Mr. Keeble. Commissioner Kraft. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay. Item 16. A water contract, electrical upgrades, Manning Tower, Project 24-3, and Bel Air Tower, Project 24-10, Exhibit M in your packet. Um, so, Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, members of the board, Mr. Uh, Barry just distributed a, a memo on the final award here. Commissioner Trask, you should have received an email earlier today from Susan. I did, yes. On this item. Thank you. Okay. If I could ask Mr. Uh, Barry to speak on it. Thank you, Mr. Stable. Uh, board members, good afternoon. Um, on March 13, 2024, Capital Improvement sent to us and it bids from prime electric contracts for the electrical upgrade project at 24-3 Manning Tower and 24-10 uh, Bel Air High Rise. The public bid open was held on Wednesday, April 24, 2024, at 11 a.m. Immediately after the bid opening, capital improvements and the authorities, architect and engineer, evaluated the bids for completeness. Two bids were received, but one was deemed to be unresponsive and one was rejected. The, the other um, apparent low bid from Systems Contracting Incorporated of seven Scoby uh, Circle Plymouth was deemed responsive and responsible in the amount of two million two hundred thousand for the base bid work. Additionally, re reference checks were conducted on the apparent low bidder, and they were deemed responsive and responsible. We would recommend award a contract to Systems Contracting of seven Scoby uh, Circle Plymouth Mass. A uh, contract for electrical upgrades at twenty four three Manning Tower and twenty four ten. A high rise in the amount of two million two hundred thousand dollars. We need a motion and a second. Yeah, item 16. So move. 
Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Kevin Lovett, seconded by Commissioner Janet Trapp. Motion is to award Systems Contracting Incorporated of Seven Kobe Circle, Plymouth Mass, a contract for the electrical upgrade project at 24 3 Muning Tower, 24 10 Bel Air High Rise, in the amount of $2,200,000. Any discussion or questions on the motion? Now, are we upgrading electrical systems? Or? Yes. Much yeah. okay. It's the it's the it's not the stuff in the apartments. No, it's the, the building. Here it is the panels in the apartments, and it's not okay. panels in the uh, LA the items for what's going on. Yes, it's the panels. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's been uh, something that's been noted in our uh, HUD inspections. Uh, it's been something that's been noted for some time throughout the state that the, these um, panels need to be replaced. We'll call Mr. Tebow. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion carries. Item 17. A water of contract. A definite quantity architectural engineering services. I am ending the packet. Mr. Tebow. If I could ask Mr. Barry to speak on that, please. Thank you, Mr. Tebow. Uh, back on uh, March 8, 2024, the authority re uh, received four proposals for response to a capital improvements request for proposal for the indefinite quantity architect engineering services dated February 12, 2024. This RFP was, uh, was to contract with three firms that would have a two year contract with an option of the for a board approved third year <clears throat> to be available for a variety of tasks come, that come up during the year, such as drawings and um, firefighting, firefighting plan for an affordable housing or for a complete plan for a project or creating construction documents and construction administration for the project housing authority. In each case, the firms under contract would be asked to submit a quote for the task and the authority would select the most advantageous quote. A review uh, committee of Ms. Uh, Mr. Tebow, uh, Ms. Macedo, and myself examined and ranked the four proposals based on their demonstrated experiences and similar project, public housing projects, staff capabilities, and proposals. After the proposals were ranked, the references checked, the committee met and rejected two proposals due to incompleteness and selected the top, sorry, it should be top two current firms, but I apologize, uh, two firms. The committee has deemed that two firms, uh, McKinnell, McKinnell and Taylor and TBR Architects have the qualifications to perform the tasks that outlined in the RFP. We would recommend to make, uh, to award indefinite con contract for two years with an option of third year to McKinnell, McKinnell and Taylor and TBA Architects. We need a motion and a second, item 17. Yeah, yeah so move. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Janice Trapp. Motion is to award a two year contract with an option for a third year to McKinnell, McKinnell and Taylor and TBA Architects Incorporated for indefinite quantity architectural engineering services. Any discussion or questions on the motion? Hearing none, roll call, Mr. Tebow. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion carries. Thanks. Item 18. Approval of change order number two, creative place banking. Kennedy Drive Project 667-2, Exhibit O in effect. Mr. Tebow. Um, I just I want to make one note before I turn it over to Mr. Barry. So that, that, as you know, Mr. Barry negotiates any change orders um, with any contractors coming okay. in. This is a $14,227.11 change order. And you can see the backup that's with it. That's because of the... Uh, negotiations that he does to make sure that every penny that we spend is going to where it's supposed to go. And he does a great job. It's one of our, I'd say it's one of Chris's biggest strengths. Um, Mr. Barry. Thank you. Uh, again, below a number of uh, unforeseen issues. Um, 
in our authority request item to put to very construction the general contractor at Kennedy Drive create a placemate. After review of the the Barica change order proposal, the amount of fourteen thousand two hundred twenty-seven thousand eleven cents for the work, capital improvements, the authorities, architect, and construction advisor for EOHLC deem it to be responsible and in the industry standard. We would recommend to accept change order number two in the amount of $14,227.11 from pre construction of 219 Walnut Street, Suite B, West Bridgewater, Mass, for the Kennedy Drive Creative okay. Place for the project. I also want to know it's less than it's less than one percent. It's one mm percent -hmm. of the yeah. it's the job. We need a motion and a second. Item eighteen. So moved. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Janet Kraft. Motion is to approve change order number two in the amount of fourteen thousand two hundred twenty-seven dollars and eleven cents for the contract with Parisa Construction. Of West Bridgewater Mass for the Kennedy Drive Creative Place Making Project. Any discussion or questions on the motion? We we've generally had good experience with Barica, correct? Correct. Because mm -hmm. we seem to go back to them a lot. Well, there they um, we also do. Um, it's got to be low low bid. That's um, right. They're very aggressive most of the time, uh, and they they they're in, they know the industry as well. Yeah, so. yeah. They're, they're one of the, the state's favorite uh, contract as well. Oh, good. Yeah. Roll we'll call, Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item nineteen. Review of financial comparative exhibit P in the packet. I bring Mr. Pages back to the table. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, so what you have in front of you today is the uh, financial statements for the uh, first two months of our fiscal year. Um, so that would be ending February 29th. Um, all the programs are, are uh, it's, uh, working as, as well as can be expected at this early stage of the game in our fiscal year. Again, um, state program is is a constant uh, is on a constant watch uh, just to make sure that we're able to keep it as uh, positive or uh, in a surplus as much as we can. But that's quite a difficult uh, job yeah. for the state. So, so I, I would say overall we're we're, we're doing well this year, and, but uh, February doesn't really mean too much. Two months in. If you're if you got a lot of money, it looks like you're making a lot of money. We might not have got some big bills. It looks like you're losing a little money. You just have you might have had a big bill and don't have the income yet. Um, but we will be monitoring this next. Um, in fact, uh, Thursday morning we'll be closing uh, the quarter, correct? Right. Uh, which is an important milestone, and um, and, we'll, we'll, and you'll be receiving those reports at the next meeting. Okay. Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah. It's a good yeah. idea to put the deficit on the second page. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. put the state on the second page. <laughs> the, the, the state is, and again, that's purposeful. They do not want, you know, we build up the reserve. The 689 program, we're telling them the rent is much too low. They say that's what the rent is. The reason we have a thousand dollar deficit, it's the at 689 too, is because we had to buy a dishwasher. A dishwasher. That, that's again, it's that yeah. tight. The market is that tight. Dishwasher, correct? Uh, it, it was Vinny's fault. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, <laughs> 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 right. but, it, but again, that's how tight it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's a commercial dishwasher. It's a yeah. nice dishwasher, right? A thousand dollars. Um, but it um that's they they bare minimal. What does it take to keep the lights on? Bare minimal, huh? You're lucky you found one. Yeah. Yes, yeah, good. I'm good. Yeah, they did Everett's. And it's short. We need a motion and a second. Item 19. So moved. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Janet Kraft. Motion is to accept the financial comparative for the period ending February 29th. 2024 and put on file. 
Any discussion or questions on the motion? Hearing none, roll call, Mr. Peebles. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion carried. Mm -hmm. Item 20, Executive Director's Report, Exhibit Q in the packet. Mr. Peebles. I'll just touch upon a couple of things. Um, we are finishing up our um, standard operating procedures uh, draft with the finance department. Um, Ms. Campbell has just started the uh, project of starting up a uh, standard operating procedure between asset management, maintenance, and capital with our uh, inspections. So we're, we're looking forward to getting that stuff so that you just open up a book and if we hire someone in five years, this is how it works and this is where you are in, in this as a standard operating procedure. Um, we did have HUD come out and do an inspection and it went relatively well. Uh, they gave us a 90. If you remember, we've received, I think the highest was a 92 at one time. The lowest was a 48. I don't get too excited about it anymore because they don't, um, I don't think they really reflect everything that we do. But under the new standards, we did we did well. The new standards are the national standard for the physical inspection of real estate. Oh. So remember React, you heard React all the time. Now it's Inspire. Inspire? Um, so Inspire okay, with, no with, it, it, no <laughs> with no I, with no I, Inspire, Inspire, yeah. Inspire, yeah. Um, so that the thing on TV, the button you press. <laughs> 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 um, so that, but that went well. Um, as the Vinny's group worked uh, closely with them. They we we used to get months and months notice. Now we get a couple weeks notice, and then um, they did come out from the state also. And they did some inspections of our state units, uh, and that that went well also. Um, so that that's that's fine. Other than that, um, I think we spoke about the uh, most of the other things. I do put it in written form so you have it here and you can refer to it before or after the meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you have any questions on my report, you can call me directly anytime, or I can meet directly with you. One question on the Tampa Water right? Yes. Do you have a, a fast date or anything on that? I do not. I spoke to, I don't know if you heard over the weekend, the um, executive director of uh, mass development, who yeah. we have put the application in with for tax credits, resigned suddenly. No. I don't, don't know what that means. I did sure. call um, our contact there yesterday. Um, I spoke with Cambridge yesterday. Um, we don't know what that means. The contact that I had said, look, uh, we expect to be um, considering you um, in, in June uh, to bring us to official action. Um, he, he had told us uh, originally in December, then March. Um, so that's why we're pushing on that other, those other doors with the governor, with the secretary. Uh, I, I have to again thank, especially thank um, Senator Brady and um, Representative Dubois, who have been pushing, pushing hard. Um, and inside the city, it would be uh, uh, compliment that though. Uh, so nothing hard. goes seamlessly. No, no, and this is this this particular problem wasn't expected, but problems were expected. You know, when you go through a project like this, it's never, it doesn't, it's not a straight trajectory. Um, yeah. We've fought through things and we'll, we'll get this, we'll, people said, well, I hope it happens. It will happen. It should have happened <laughs> years ago, right? That, that, yeah. uh, but it will happen. Um, Good. I can promise you that. Uh, you, you know? We need a big banner at Camp Hill that says that. It will happen. We do uh, need to get back and meet with the residents that's been on my agenda. Um, Self-help, they're still there. We're in no rush to get them out of there. They're paying the light bills. Uh, you know, an, a, a, an occupied building is better than an empty building. But yeah. at some time, they're going to move up to their new offices on uh, Main Street and Avon. And Chris, is, he'll knock it down. He'll, he'll have to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are many people <laughs> using the um, Rockland Trust way of paying their rent? We're experimenting. Uh, we're, no, I'm sorry. We're, we're investigating that uh, commission staff. We're not doing it. Um, oh. Yeah, so we have to figure out how to do that, how to market it to our residents. 
and there's also a cost to it. So the people will be receiving thirty less than thirty percent of the adjusted gross income for rent. Oh. You know, with, hey, with a credit card, the yeah. credit card company takes some of it. Uh, oh. which is, uh, that that might be a moving to work uh, item. We want any barrier to pay rent removed. Um, I don't know if you have. I mean, I have um, all my all four of my children are in their twenties. They don't know what a checkbook is. They have no, no. idea. They don't know what a <laughs> register is. Uh, if you can't do it on your <laughs> if you can't do it on your phone, they don't do it. <laughs> that's that's the truth. Um, yeah. Well, we need a motion and a second. Item twenty. So move. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Dana Kraft. Motion to accept the executive director's report for April 30th, 2024, and put on file. Any discussion or questions on the motion? Hearing none, roll we'll call, Mr. Keeble. Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Motion carried. Item 21. Old business. Any old business? Hearing none. Item 22. New business. I have one item. The uh, I will pull out that access road. It's going to be open up. We're going to drive that Any proof of that? Has anybody heard about the access road at uh, Earl Street being opened up, but going through to the sort of the new neighborhood they're putting it over there? Yes, I haven't heard anything. Haven't heard a thing. I, they took down all the trees. Did they really? Wow. Yeah. The trees are gone. They are developing that. I okay. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we saw that on Earl Street. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The access road. Yeah. The dumps are gone. There was a dump there. So the residents aren't happy about that, correct? I do not believe. I believe. Uh, I believe we have control of that road. Yeah. I don't think they should just do that. So, I, I, Mr. Chairman, well, I'll, I'll look into it a little further. I'm sure the local councilor knows if it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, I, I would hope. Um, but no, I it would not heard anything about that at all, and we would we, we would um, not be in favor of that at all. Yeah. Just just so you know, the fence is still there. Yeah. But the trees have all been taken down. Like that. Yeah. They they had they had developed. We were we were approached at one time to uh, you know, buy that property to develop it. Um, but to be quite honest with you, what they did is they took all the easy development where all the money was made. They had already done that, and then wanted to sell. <laughs> yeah. But it, uh, I don't. We have not been approached, and we would not be in favor of it. It would not be a, a betterment for our property. Any other items under item 22? No business? No. Do we know when the annual meeting is? Yes, June 28th. Thank you. Is it a teen challenge? June 28th, a teen challenge. Yeah. yeah. Open the road. Oh, no. Yes, uh, well, we'll we always. Ask the guests there to get there by 1145 so that we can start it in time. Yeah. Any other questions? Item 22, new business. Item 23, need a motion and a second. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Don't leave yet, Janet. A motion has been made by Commissioner Carol Roberts, seconded by Commissioner Janet Tran. Motion is to adjourn. Yeah, Any I'm questions? not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions or discussion on the motion? We got to do a roll call, Jeff. Mr. Keeble? Commissioner Trask. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Three seventeen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Worked yeah. a little Thank bit. Thank you, of everybody. Hope you're there, but yeah. we got it done. Yeah. I have a couple of things to use. Right.